Hello again, everybody. I'm Chris. And I'm Sue. Today, we're going to talk about how I brought my portion of the debt to the table. And you had $103,000. Finger guns. <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> but never at the same time, apparently. No. I'm shot first. So we have a lot of debt starting from a long time ago, and we wanted to outline as much of it as we could. So we have notes. If I'm looking down all the time, it's at the notes. There's a lot of them. So my student loans. I went to school in 2007. I graduated from there in 2008. It was an accelerated technical school program, which took only nine months. That nine months cost me $32,000 that I had to borrow. And at the end of it, all I got was a diploma. So I said the initial amount that I borrowed to go to school was $32,000, but it was almost 10 years before I actually started paying on it due to the wonders of deferment and forbearance. They are not your friend. When I started paying on it, about 10 years later, the balance had risen to $48,000 because of an 8.5% interest rate. The deferments and forbearances that we had put the loan through did change the amount that I have to pay every month because it didn't change the overall term of the loan. So I still have to pay it by a certain date, and because the balance only went up, so did the payments. Next on our magic cheat sheet list is credit cards, everybody's favorite topic. I got my first credit card while I was going to school. This was probably 2007, at the end of 2007, early 2008, so it's been well over 12 years. That was a very low balance credit card because I was so young and didn't have established credit history. It was a $300 limit. By the time I had graduated, only a few months after I got the card, it was basically just maxed out. The next credit card that I got was through Bank of America when I opened a checking account with them. This was in 2008. They gave me, I think, a $3,000 limit. And over the course of probably a year or two, it got maxed out. Between then and now, there have been a few other credit cards that I've gotten. They've had different balances on them over the course of those years. Um, they currently don't have a balance on them at all. We also recently did buy a new bed. Uh, the one that we had was completely falling apart. We wanted to get something that was going to last us several years, so we spent probably more than we needed to, but we have something that we're very happy with. We're paying 0% interest on it, but it started at $2,904. At one point, I did actually take all of my credit card balances and get a small personal loan through a credit union that I was using at the time for a vehicle loan to pay them off, and um, that helped me out quite a bit. It brought the interest down from whatever it was on the cards, probably 16 or 18 percent, down to a set eight and a half percent with a much lower monthly payment and more of the payment going towards that principal balance. The next topic on the list is cars and anything with an engine or wheels. Uh, because I'm a gearhead, so I bought a motorcycle at one point. Uh, the first car that I bought was in 2007. I paid $14,000 for it by the time you figure the taxes for New York State, which were either eight or eight and a quarter percent, of course, for sales tax. That loan was at eight and a half percent interest. Um, after a couple years of paying on it, I did refinance it, which extended the term of the loan and also significantly reduced the interest payment. The loan went from about $365 a month to $270 a month. My dad actually ended up buying the car off of me when I had about a year left on the term of the loan. He just took over the payments. Um, I made the payments through my bank, and once it was done, I just signed the car over to him. Him and my mom drove that car for several years after that. At a later date, I did buy a pickup truck. I bought it private party off of Craigslist. I went to a local credit union that I was dealing with at the time, and they gave me a loan on the truck. At a low interest rate, it was under 5%. The payments were under $150 a month, so that was pretty easy for me to do. In 2010, I bought myself a brand new motorcycle because I felt like spoiling myself for no good reason. Um, I bought it from a dealership. Obviously it was brand new. I paid the full sales tax on it. I didn't haggle on the price. Um, I let them get the financing for me. They got a pretty good interest rate on it. I think that was only about 4% because it was a brand new machine. So I had that paid off in four years and I really did enjoy it. I don't actually regret that purchase at all. When the truck that I had kicked the bucket and died, um, I didn't think it was worth putting any money into it. There was too much rust because New York. 
Um, so I took a little bit that I still owed on it, plus I had a debt consolidation loan for some of my credit cards. It was about $4,000 worth of debt, and I wrapped that into buying the car that I currently have, which I shouldn't have done. Um, I was able to borrow more than the asking price for the car because it was undervalued at the dealership a little bit, and they will generally loan out a little bit more than the value of a vehicle for that purpose and for taxes and things like that. So um, I rolled that into the car and I paid uh, $12,995 plus the tax. Um, and when it was all said and done, I walked out the door for about eighteen or $19,000. There's a lot of reasons why I brought so much debt to the table. Um, a big part of it was just me making excuses for years and years and years to not pay it off because it didn't feel like as big of a deal or I was just in denial about it. There were so many excuses. Another big part of the reason was just that I moved around a lot for several years before I finally ended up moving back home with my parents um, and I lived with them for several years. But in the in, the, in between, when I accumulated most of the debt and then, um, I was only ever in one spot for about six months at a time before I was moving to different states, even different time zones, trying to find a place to settle down. This was during 2009 when the recession was really bad. It was really difficult to get a job, but it's also a lot harder when you don't actually take it seriously and try to find a job. There was also a lot of feelings of just kind of hopelessness or depression that come along with that too. Um, when the mountain of debt is so high and you feel like you're trying to climb it while wearing a straight jacket, it's very difficult to make any progress at all. Some of the things that were really bad about the debts that I had, for one, was that a lot of them were at really high interest rates. Um, a lot of it was credit card debt and because I didn't have a way to lower that interest rate for a very long time, I ended up paying um, because I was carrying a balance, sometimes 14, 15, 18 percent interest on some of that stuff. The other one being the student loan that I have, that is a parent plus loan, it's actually in my mother's name, it's not in my name, but I'm still paying on it. That's 8.5% interest, and when the balance is as high as it is, it just accumulates very quickly. The worst mistake that I made in all of this debt was when I decided to go to school, I kind of did it in a panic moment. Um, I was going to be losing my home at the time. I won't go into a lot of details on that, but I needed somewhere to go. I needed somewhere to go quickly, and I hadn't gone to college. I hadn't gone to school, so I found this trade school. It seemed like a good idea at the time, and I just kind of went. I didn't do enough research. I didn't even do a tour of the campus. I basically just decided to go, figured out the financial aid, signed on the dotted line, and packed my stuff and went hearing all of your <laughs> accumulation of debt and why it happened, I do think you did some things right. Um, something you did, which is something that I was doing, was you paid everything on time. Like, you always found a way to pay everything on time. Somehow. <laughs> but that was really good because you didn't have to go to collections and your credit score is rock star, just like mine. The other thing that I think was really good is that you were the one that really encouraged us to start this journey together, besides marriage. <laughs> but um, the actual debt payoff, you were the one that started the research and a little bit of the poking and prodding and the patience and the explanations. And you made it very easy to get on board. So it was shockingly easy for me to just say, okay, let's do it. Let's solve this because you're a very yeah, good leader. <laughs> and it was something we overthought it and we overtalked it, just like we said in our last video. We just overthought the whole thing. We did math until we were blue in the face. And then eventually we talked about it until we didn't want to hear about it anymore and then just started doing it. Yeah. Another good thing that helped out a lot was that my parents were able to let me move back home with them after everything kind of just failed for several years. Nothing was kind of lining up or hitting right, but I was able to move back home. I was able to do that without paying rent, um, and it really saved me a lot of headaches. Um, I was able to very slowly start getting my feet back under me. Um, I did that in 2009, and I lived there with them until 2017 when I moved into the apartment here with Sue. Um, another big thing that's helped out tremendously has been as a result of getting better credit scores, getting better credit cards with different offers, we've been able to get credit cards that have balanced transfer incentives. 
So if you're carrying a balance on one card, you transfer it to another, you pay a one-time fee, but that fee is usually a very low percentage or a minimum dollar amount. So for us, it would be 4% to transfer a balance, but then you don't pay any interest on it after that for a year to two years. If you do the math on a balance, most of the time that 4% transfer fee works out to about just what the first two months worth of interest would have been anyway. So in essence, it's like getting, if you only have a one year balance transfer, it's like paying two months of interest and then the rest of that time is interest free. And that really makes a huge difference when you're trying to pay down a huge amount of money. And mainly the last thing that's really helped us both out the most is just getting disciplined. You have to be disciplined. Discipline's the only way to get through it because motivation is fleeting. If you get motivated to pay off your debt today, you probably won't be motivated to pay it off next month when the bills keep coming. You have to just be disciplined. So that's it, that's the whole story. That's why I'm in the debt that I'm in. That's why I brought so much to our marriage and we've been making such great progress on it we're going to keep making progress on it and we're going to tell all of you guys really soon exactly how much progress we've made it's a lot so i hope to see you then i don't normally do outros i'll just be like bye <laughs>